Hi everyone, this is Shakun Arya from iThrive and today we will be talking about lipids. So welcome to this master class on introduction to lipids. In today's topics for discussion, we will be talking about cholesterol, lipoproteins, apolipoproteins and lipid panel test. So now let's start with the basic question of what exactly lipids are, okay? So lipids are a broad range of macronutrients which are organic in nature and insoluble in water. They play a major role as a structural molecule and also as an energy source. There are different types of lipids, namely triglycerides, phospholipids and steroids. Triglycerides are the major storage form of fats in the body and are further categorized into fats and oils. Now the main difference between lipids and fats is that lipids are a broad group of biomolecules whereas fats are a type of lipids. Fat is the name given to a class of triglycerides that appear as solid or semi-solid at room temperature, whereas oils are triglycerides that appear as a liquid at room temperature. The other two types of lipids are phospholipids, which are the main components of cell membranes, and steroids, which are the class of lipids which include cholesterol. And cholesterol is the major form of lipid found in our body. Now we have all heard about cholesterol in our lives, right, in some form or another. But let's try to understand what it really is and what exactly is its purpose in our body. Now to define it simply, cholesterol is a waxy fatty substance which is found in all cells of the body and it serves a variety of purposes in the body. Now to talk about its functions, it is actually an essential component of cell membranes and helps maintain the integrity and fluidity of these membranes. It is also needed for the manufacture of steroid-based hormones, particularly the sex hormones like testosterone and progesterone. Other hormones produced mainly by the adrenal gland also require cholesterol for production. Aldosterone, which is the hormone that makes the kidneys retain water, and cortisol, which is the hormone that is important in suppressing inflammation in the body are two such examples. Apart from this, cholesterol must also be present for the skin to manufacture vitamin D and it also enables the body to form bile acids which are needed for the absorption of fats. Now cholesterol comes from two sources. It is synthesized majorly by the liver but it can also be sourced from the diet, mainly from foods of animal origin. Now having understood about lipids and cholesterol, Let's see how they are actually transported in the body for their functions. Lipids by nature are insoluble in water. As the main constituent of the body is water, all lipids such as cholesterol and triglycerides must bind to proteins to form lipoprotein, which are complexes of proteins and lipids in varying proportions and it actually helps in the transportation of lipids in our body. There are four major classes of circulating lipoproteins each with its own characteristic protein and lipid composition. Now these are chylomicrons, very low density lipoproteins, which are known as VLDLs. Now low density lipoproteins known as LDLs and high density lipo lipoproteins known as HDL. Now let's talk about the first type of lipoprotein known as chylomicrons. Now these are large triglyceride rich particles made by the intestine which are involved in the transport of mainly dietary triglycerides and some amount of cholesterol. If we talk about chylomicrons, we also have to mention chylomicron remnants. The removal of triglycerides from chylomicrons by tissues results in smaller particles called chylomicron remnants. Compared to chylomicrons, these particles are enriched in cholesterol and can induce blockages in the blood vessels. Now next, we'll discuss about VLDLs or very low density lipoproteins. Now these are particles which are produced by the liver and are triglyceride rich. Similar to chylomicrons, the size of the VLDL particles can vary depending on the quantity of triglycerides carried in the particle. However, VLDL particles are smaller than chylomicrons. Apart from this, a key difference is that chylomicrons transport exogenous or dietary fats and VLDLs transport endogenous fats. Now moving on to low density lipoproteins 
or LDLs. Now these are particles derived from VLDL particles and are even further enriched in cholesterol. LDL carries the majority of the cholesterol that is in the circulation. Next we discuss about HDL or high density lipoprotein. Now these are particles which play an important role in reverse cholesterol transport from tissues to the liver as it absorbs cholesterol and carries it back to the liver to be flushed out of the body. This is one potential mechanism by which HDL prevents the buildup of plaque. Now here is a visual representation of the lipid and protein content of chylomicrons, LDL and HDL for better understanding. You can see that in chylomicrons, the triglycerides are the major percentage, whereas in LDL, cholesterol is the major lipid percentage. HDL here is more predominant with phospholipids. If you look at the protein content, chylomicron contains a limited amount, almost negligible, while LDL has 20% of protein content. However, in HDL, you can see that 50% content is that of protein thus explaining its anti-atherogenic property as well. An important protein component of this transport mechanism of lipids in our body are apolipoproteins. So let's discuss what these actually are. These are proteins which bind to lipids to form lipoproteins, whose main function is to transport lipids as we just discussed. Apolipoproteins are important in maintaining the structural integrity and solubility of these lipoproteins. Now, there are five major classes of apolipoproteins, which are ApoA, ApoB, ApoC, ApoD, and ApoE. Now, ApoA refers to the apolipoproteins, especially Apo1 and Apo2, which are primarily but not exclusively found in HDL. A third member of the ApoA family which is ApoA4, is a minor component of chylomicrons. ApoB, on the other hand, is the major apoprotein of LDL, but also comprises about 35% of VLDL protein. There are two forms of ApoB, a large form called ApoB100, which is found in LDL, and a smaller form called ApoB48, which is produced mainly in the intestine. Now, ApoC, represents a group of apoproteins, mainly ApoC1, ApoC2, and ApoC3, which are described as major components of VLDL, but are also present as minor components in HDL. ApoD, on the other hand, is a minor component that is also found in HDL. ApoE is a major component of VLDL and a minor one of HDL. Now, having understood the different components of lipids, Let's now discuss about the lipid profile. A lipid panel is a blood test that measures the amount of certain lipids in the blood, such as total cholesterol, LDL cholesterol, HDL cholesterol, and triglycerides. Now, the total cholesterol actually measures the overall cholesterol level in blood, which comprises of HDL, LDL, and VLDL. The low-density lipoprotein cholesterol or the LDL cholesterol is the type of cholesterol which can collect in the blood vessels since it carries the cholesterol from the liver to different parts of the body. The HDL or high-density lipoprotein cholesterol is known as a good cholesterol because it helps carry away LDL cholesterol from the cells to the liver where it is flushed out thus keeping the arteries open and blood flowing more freely. Now, triglycerides are the most common type of fat in the body. They store excess energy from the diet. Apart from storing energy, they also provide insulation to the cells and aid in the absorption of fat-soluble vitamins. All these tests help us to find out the amount of lipids which are actually flowing in our blood. With this, we come to the end of our discussion today regarding lipids. If you have any questions, shoot them in the comments below and subscribe to the channel for more such knowledgeable content.